That's the thing about Loping Telescope, it can just manifest some really nice cards kind of randomly. Time is winding like a waltz. <laughs> Ah, a paradox! At another time, we might have been friends. <laughs> We're gone three for three. Played the exact same cards. I think that's pretty likely. <laughs> four for four. And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube. For the first of three donation decks today, we got the return of Zareth Zillion with the arsenal at the top end. Going back to this fan favorite where we're going to be playing a lot of landmarks. Having our landmarks get destroyed uh, because with Zareth we need four to level up and then every landmark that gets destroyed after that we're dealing three to the weakest enemy. Pretty powerful champion there when, once you get that going. And then of course we're going to have our uh, top end card that's going to be winning our games, the arsenal that will have a random keyword for each allied landmark you've destroyed this game. Zillion's in here being a good control card. You know, good blocker to play on round two, but then also creates those time bombs that are awesome landmarks to destroy because <laughs> they got the countdown one. Um, so it's a pretty good pairing, pretty good pairing. So let's go ahead and, and try this list out. I really, really like Ancient Hourglass in this deck, and I, I would want to play a third Ancient Hourglass. Um, you know, it's not, this is a viewer submitted list, not not exactly my list, but um, the person that submitted this, Aroas, does play Zareth Zillion a lot, so I think our list is really good. The only thing is I really want that third Ancient Hourglass because it protects both champions and then also doubles the keywords with Arsenal, so it works really well with kind of all three of our champions, if you think about it. <laughs> we basically are playing a three-champion deck, Zillion, Zareth, and the Arsenal. All right, anyway, let's get to it. Let's go ahead and, and uh, play some games. Silver LeBlanc. Haven't played against Silver LeBlanc in a while, but that's a pretty good deck. Alright, I think we'll keep... Maybe we can send the Pathways back, but we'll keep these. Um, good stun card. Yeah, so good old Reputation Aggro. It's been a, been a minute since we've played against that. Quick hands make quick work. Ooh, Treasure Seeker. Awesome. So I am very excited about the uh, Steelers versus Bills game today. It starts in 30 minutes. Don't don't tell me any scores because I'm gonna watch. You know I'm recording it. I'm gonna watch it after the stream. If it's made of sand, I can ride it. Watch your head. Okay, we'll just take the two. It's good to leave them with a one health thing cause with Zara dealing one damage to start with. I think I just pass here, even though I waste one mana. Because I want to keep this right, because we may have to use this Ride of the Arcane. No, maybe I should have just unraveled Earth. Yeah, I probably should have just unraveled Earth. The first time. So I could still have one spell mana right now if I would have just played that last round. So I can't, can't really play any other units, but never mind, maybe they can't. I mean, the hunter should be attacking because it just has it has vulnerable anyway. Time 
on yet. All right, maybe Naturalist blow up a Roiling Sands, get a 5-4. We want to blow up a Hex Plosive Minefield, maybe. Yeah, probably going to want to be doing that. So we're preservari preservarium -ing. Okay. Good card. Good card. Not the best situation for us. They can open attack and hit us for seven. This better be worth my time, lady. Just name your price. I really wish I didn't play that second preservarium now because of the quicksand, but then again I wouldn't have the quicksand if I didn't play that second preservarium. I don't know if this, like, does this just take out the spell shield? Because if it just takes out the spell shield, I can't play this. But if it would actually stun, then I would want to play this. Um, I'm not sure if this gets through spell shield, if it counts as a skill. It's obviously not a spell, but spell shield also deals with skills as well. You know, skills usually have that symbol. I don't think this is a skill. No, I think it just stuns. Awesome. Good. For the Empire. If it was important, they should have built it better. Very good. Hey, wake up, you hammer. That worked out. All right, so they're going to have their reputation enabled. Easy blocks. I am everywhere. I am everyone. We could use some more champions. We've only had the one Zareth right now. We've drawn a lot of cards. Arsenal. Our third champion. Mm. Awesome. All right, take down LeBlanc. Really need one more mana. It's not a bad attack, but I like passing right here because I don't want them to play other stuff. do anything. <laughs> Unfortunately, the, that spell shield, you know, like, you can't... Quicksand just gets rid of the spell shield, nothing else. So I just gotta hope that they can't do two damage to my Nexus with those two cards. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just really about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and just play the Arsenal, I think. Lifesteal. We got Scout. Ruinous Path? Wow. Exact lethal Ruinous Path. Wow. 
good hand opponent. They had one drop, two drop, both champions, all that kind of stuff. I only had one Zareth. Did not have a Zillion until round eight. Okay, so now we're playing against Lulu Poppy. Okay. We'll get that Preservarium right back. Righty the Arcane, important removal spell for both champions, for both Lulu and Poppy. It's rough never having Zillion. Zillion's the best card to see in the opener, for sure. Maybe we should be playing Loping Telescope in this deck. Just, like, it does seem like we're kind of missing a blocker. Loping Telescope could be really good. Because there's, like, Preservariums and Hidden Pathways and... This is just... Yeah, I mean, what else is this thing going to do but trade with these? The reason to make this attack is, like, if they have the the card that gives um, Fleet Feather Tracker uh, quick attack here. Or even Lulu. You know, anything like that. Yeah, because that just makes that a 4-4. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is we have a whole lot of card draw, but not really bodies. And so maybe a card like Loping Telescope instead of Hidden Pathways, where we're not drawing two cards, but it puts a, it gives us a good body like early on to block, but then it still gives us another card in hand. Because I don't think we really need more card draw. We, we need more bodies. I guess I could have. Hmm. I guess I could have played Endless Devout and had it die. And that would have gave me the good landmark to destroy. Maybe I should have done that last round. Way down to five. And they got a 3 3 elusive over there. So I can kill the elusive or kill. I mean the Zareth. I can kill the elusive or kill the trickster. I guess I'll wait. You know, could have done that, but I guess I'll wait till we play the Zareth. have to kill do we have to kill the elusive the benefit of kind of thinking the answer is yes I think I like that change. change. Take out hidden pathways, put in um, putting loping telescope. 
And that could be a good change. Okay, so I could attack with the 5-1. It's not necessarily a bad attack, but I think the Flea Feather Cracker should die right here. Yeah. So we don't want to attack with the 5-1 and they block the Flea Feather Cracker because the Cracker is just dead, so we want to keep the 5-1 alive. Ooh, Zareth Champion spell is good. I want to play Naturalist, but... Yeah, I mean, like, this is just the play. Because if this works, gets rid of both of them. Surprised, like, surprised they didn't do anything with the Hell Picks first, like a Barrier first, or something. There we go, Xerath. Kill Fleet Feather, tra Fleet Feather Tracker, and then Yordle Smith. Getting free slays. Alright, so down to three cards. I like it. I've got your back. I like that a lot. They can like make my 5-3 vulnerable and challenge it if they want. Now they don't get two of that stun. Man, this round really worked out for us. We drew really well this round. That that champion spell, and then the Hexplosive Minefield. We drew really well this round. Alright, down to one. One's not very much, but that's how it is. This will stun the Lulu, kill the Brightsteel Protector, and give me a 5-4. Time bomb. I'll just replace you. Can we do it with the time bomb? Yeah. Wow, we drew really well those last two rounds. Gangplank, Twisted Fate, but then with Teemo. The Teemo's a little weird in here. Okay, Ride of the Arcane's gonna go. Don't think we need the Ride of the Arcane right away. But maybe I'm wrong. We do have the scrapping bo Scrappy Bomb, which does give us a nice easy target for it early on. Got a mirror match. Ha, I got an idea. It's gonna blow. No. Oh. Alright, got our right of the arcane back. Buys me a new sail. Mm, good poison dart. Good. 
Uh. Oh, right, right, Because powder kegs are already vulnerable. I'll just play you. Can we get some time bombs? I like all these cards. I think Xerath is gonna, not going to be my choice. Um, but, you know, like, they seem like they're using a lot of removal over there and everything. Like, this could definitely be a game, like, where I just take a second hidden pathways. Um, but then I also like Ancient Hourglass of protecting and everything. But I think I think we're going to take a second Time hidden pathways here. Like a watch. I can still see both these hidden pathways being loping telescopes. That card is good. That card's real good. I wish I had the Ancient Hourglass right about now. If this works, this is 5 damage. Awesome. You know, as long as they didn't have like a Make It Rain or you know, some kind of fast speed removal for the Xerath. Okay. We'll trade away some on the board that's having these hidden pathways. That's what we want. I guess they are puff cap decks. Maybe playing all these hidden pathways isn't a great idea. And another one of those cards. Could mini morph it, but it takes all my mana. Yeah, I should have taken hourglass, not pathways. I'll shoot the wings off a bilgewas. Congratulations. That is bad. Hourglass protect Zareth. Man, these poison darts have just been awesome. They've been so good. <laughs> this card's good. Lecturing Yordle. No puff caps. And I 
I don't really see exactly how this is going to work out for us. I, I don't, you know, this is just, should just be us dying to this gangplank. Yeah, I mean, this is over. GG's opponent. Good deck. Our hidden Pathways looks bad again. Hey, we got a mirror match. Zareth Zillion mirror match. Loping Telescope would have just died to uh, Poison Dart in that last game. But, no, we need to keep this card. I mean, we need that card at, the, at round eight. Kind of want to keep it. Now we'll send it back. Um, so, yeah, the, but it would have died the Poison Dart, but it would have been able to create other stuff. That's the thing about Loping Telescope. It can just manifest some really nice cards kind of randomly for different situations. Because we're playing, like, this longer... Like, we're always playing longer games, and so we kind of need random, some random cards every once in a while. Time is winding, like a walk. <laughs> Ah, a paradox! At another time, we might have been friends. <laughs> We're gone three for three. Play the exact same cards. I guess I shouldn't do that. Yeah. Can we go four for four? <clears throat> do we both play Xerath? Because I don't have Ride of the Arcane. If they have Ride, you know, they could have Ride of the Arcane to kill my Xerath. I think that's pretty likely. <laughs> four for four. All right, I don't think we're gonna have the same round this time. I think this is finally gonna be where we switch it up. Finally had a different, different round than they did. Oh man, my rock hopper. So the problem with playing Xerath is that if I play Xerath and they play, and then they also play Xerath, it destroys my Roiling Sands, which means that I don't have a landmark anymore to destroy with the Ride of the Arcane. I mean, the situation is just so awkward. So 
If I play Endless Devout, then they play Time Bomb, then Zillion levels up. Which would be a problem. Alright, we both have leveled up Zareths. I have 9 mana, and these three together take 10. Makes sense. Scary. That's pretty scary. Gonna catch the sky. If I block with Naturalist, then whenever I play if I play Arsenal next round, Zareth kills Restored Devout. So, I need to just take this. Go to 15. Um, I kind of want to have that quicksand, but... Maybe we just play Zillion. Zillion takes 3. Turns into a 1-1. One -one. So that's perfectly fine, but then I won't have quicksand to go along with the arsenal. For next round. Definitely take Hourglass. Hourglass great with Zareth and the Arsenal. So Elusive Scout. Does have quick attack overwhelm. So I could challenge the rock hopper for free. Or like, you know, for one damage to the Nexus. Which I'm not gonna be hitting up the lethal anyway. But they are, you know, stuck as far as like playing other stuff. So if I do that. I guess if we do that we get to attack with this restored devout. Wow, they just took it. Alright. Good mirror match game. We had the big champion. Nami Zoe. They're going to have all their elusives. The elusives are going to be a problem for us. I like Quicksand. I like Unraveled Earth. I like this hand overall. Do I have to send back the minefield? No, I don't think I do. I'm, I'm gonna keep this in. I'm gonna keep it. Cool. <laughs> Is that a challenge? Challenge. Speaking of challenge. If only I could play Zareth this round with these both of these landmarks with the countdown one. I'm gonna go away round start. What's up, Nate Dog? Uh, 
All right, whatever. I don't want Zareth dealing one damage to that thing and not one damage to Zoe. Chilling. Gotta hope no removal. No removal, please. If they fail you, they can be broken. Tapestry comes in saying, having fun with the deck, but board space is an issue. It can be, especially with the Unraveled Earths. It definitely can be. So my plan is to play the Naturalist, destroy the Scrappy Bomb. So that thing already is vulnerable, so it doesn't blow up the Roiling Sands. Click OK. Click OK, opponent. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. Got rid of the Zoe. And now if they want to play a blocker, it's going to take three. Yeah, this is this Zareth has really been trouble for my opponent. We can tell these last two rounds has been big time trouble for them. The Mirai will never know fear again. Never ever. Alright, so that one takes three. Kinda want to Kind of want to stun and then ride the arcane, but maybe you shouldn't use that stun. Alright, so at least we got Nami out of here. Let's find a time bomb. Time bomb. No time bomb, but there is another Zareth. I will go ahead and just take. Hmm. 
Hm. Try to get Shelly out of here. just open attack. I don't really have any ways to destroy any landmarks. Well. Alright, let's draw two first. Okay. That is good. So I play Xerath first, and then Ride of the Arcane and then time bomb that's afterwards so i'm going to play zareth over time again? Oh, the dear. rock hopper no over the zillion nothing will stand in my way here's that board space issue you talked about tapestry. Shelly's definitely really scary. Yeah, this is scary. I guess I should have just attacked right away. I don't know. This still... Okay, perfect. It kills that. Stuns that. Kills that. Perfect. They didn't have, like, one other spell to play to keep that other thing alive. And then the Zoe has the vulnerable still. Perfect. Got rid of the, the tea sparkle flies. Double trouble. Gonna catch the sky. Gives them some blockers. Is that all you got? If this attack just does two damage to them, like dealing damage to these things to do two damage to them. Obviously, those things were going to die anyway to the time bomb at the round start. Um, also, so this thing's just going to die at round start to the Preservarium, so I don't have to play the time bomb right now. It would be kind of a waste of a time bomb. Let's let's actually lead with Rock. Let's get Rock Hopper in play and get another Roiling Sands to make their life more difficult. Hard to pass up on the arsenal. But if there's going to be a lot of elusives that kill us, we need this explosive minefield. Plus, you know, like if I'm drawing a card this round, I'm not, I can't play the arsenal anyway. There we go. That'll do. Three and two. Good win there over all the elusives. We really sh showed the power of Zareth that game, like how it slowed them down so much. They just couldn't play any of their threats they want to. And, you know, like they want to play those threats first, you know, like your Nami and your sh uh, Fleet Fight or. Shelly, <laughs> whatever. Nami and Shelly, you want to get those in play first before you play all your spells, because then Nami and Shelly will buff up their team. But they couldn't play the units because of Zareth, 
So then they don't really want to play the spells either, right? Because you want to hold on to your spells. And so that really slowed them down. And that, that was a good showing there for the Xerath. Um, but like I was saying, it just kind of felt like we need like one other body in here. <clears throat> Especially if you're not getting like Zillion on round two. I think that's really important to have. But if you're not going to have it, you could really see getting another body. And there's there's just so many good cards in Bandle City. Loping Telescope, Chief Among Them, of course. Contologist is another good blocker. Those are both very good blockers. Um, even Pokey Stick. I could see even like having like a Pokey Stick. <clears throat> it, it draws one less card than Hidden Pathways, but it just gives you some interaction. So even that. I kind of feel like either Loping Telescope or Pokey Stick, one of those two for the Hidden Pathways. Because while Hidden Pathways draws two, we already have a draw two at the Preservarium, but we have to keep affecting the board. Because... Because we're spending mana on Unraveled Earth that doesn't really affect the board. It kind of does with giving something vulnerable, but not really. And then you're, you know, spending mana on Preservarium that doesn't. Spending mana on hit, Hidden Pathways that doesn't. Having nine of these cards just seems like it's too much. And so I think I think we can kind of get away with six, but nine is a little too much. So I, I would rather play, um, you know, one of these two. If you have a If you have a preference yourself, like if it's a... If it's a pokey stick metagame, like a lot of Zoe's and Teemos and things like that, you can do that. I myself would think I would I'd prefer Loping Telescope. You can just get some, you know, crazy epics and you know all the celestial cards are usually pretty good, or you know, you get you get some really good choices there with the telescope. So that's one small change that I would kind of recommend trying out. All right, but that's gonna be it here for Zareth Zillion. It came on at the end, and Zareth really showed up well at the end. Um, and look good. Uh, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and leave those comments and let me know what you think of having Loping Telescope in this deck. That's a card that, you know, I haven't seen anybody play in this style of deck. Let me know what you think of that decision or if you got a better idea. If you like Pokestick more or Conchologist or if you just have a different idea of something that you think that could be better for the deck, love to hear it. But as, uh, that's going to be it for this video. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next one.